Hey there guys, this is Hector from Vector Graphics and this is your 10 minute tutorial. So you want to know more about Photoshop? That's good. Today we're gonna be talking about the basics. The real, real, real basics. Opening a new document, importing a photo, how layers work, and blending modes. So let's get to it. All right, guys, assuming that you have Photoshop installed already, this is what you're going to be seeing. Now, in order to open a new document, we go to File, New, or what's the same, Command N. That will open the New Document dialog. In this side, we have the recent items we've created before. Next, moving to the right, we can find the space where we can name the document we are creating. This will be named as tutorial one. Below that, we have the width and the height. Using this drop down menu, we are able to change the document measurements in inches, pixels, centimeters, and the rest. Depending if you are creating graphics for digital purposes, let's say, or actual printing, you might want to switch between inches and pixels. Now, the resolution. This number right here, this one is a biggie. The resolution of your document will establish how many pixels each inch contain. The three basic resolution I work with personally is 72, 150, and 300 dpi. And by the way, dpi stands for dots per inch. I usually work with 300 dpi's, although if I will be creating graphics for display, like artwork for Facebook, Instagram, or a website, 72 dpi will perfectly do. Now, I always use 300 dpi's, but that's a personal choice, really. If I'm creating a very big artwork, let's say for a large format banner, I would definitely lower the dpi to 150 or 72, depending on how far the banner is intended to be looked at. Something important for you to understand is that the larger the number, the larger this number here, the harder the process will be on your Mac or your PC. Moving forward, we have the color mode. This one is very important also. Let's focus on the RGB and CMYK colors. RGB stands for red, green and blue, and these are the colors intended to be used in this place. CMYK, on the other hand, stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The black color is also known as key, that's why the K. The main difference is that the, the RGB option will be used only when you are creating artworks for Facebook, Instagram, or a website, while the CMYK is used for actual printing. It's important to understand that the effect and processes done in Photoshop will not look the same in one or the other. They will vary since the amount and kinds of colors are not the same. And you need to have that into consideration when creating your artwork. If not, you're gonna end up like with crazy changes in colors and stuff when you publish or you print. So be careful with this. After we have the, the setup completed, now we hit create. Perfect. Here we have the canvas. This is where all the magic happened, guys. Now, since Photoshop is intended for photo manipulation, let's touch for a moment how we can import a photo into it. I will show you the simplest way of doing this, or at least my favorite, especially since we already created a canvas with the right dimensions we needed for a project. So we will be like bringing an, an image without affecting the settings that we already set up for the project. Adobe did this very simple for us. Just go to the finder, navigate where you have your images, you drag and drop. There we go. By default, Photoshop is going to drop the picture as a smart object. So that's why you see these lines over here. Just press enter and your image is on the document already. This image you just imported adopt the settings of your document and that is key on the flip side if you want the image to be imported to set the settings for your document then drag the image to this bar over here and now the photo established the settings this document is gonna have okay but since we did this already and we have the settings that we wanted from the beginning 
you just drag the image here and this image is gonna adopt all the settings this document has. If you notice on the right side of the program, right here, a small icon appears just above the background. So, original we have this, all of a sudden when we dropped the image, we obtained this one. This is a layer. Photoshop works by stacking layers one on top of the other. As you can see here, right now we have two layers, the background or the canvas, and the image we just dropped inside the canvas. If we go and drop another photo inside this canvas, like so, we would then have three layers now. By the way, we can reorder the layers as we please, except the background when it's locked. When it's locked, this background is static. You cannot do anything, you see? You cannot use the move tool because the layer is locked. Okay, now I want to touch for a second the blending modes since we are talking about layers. You can not only change the stacking order of your layers and apply effects and masks, but also how one layer interacts with the layer below. This is an amazing tool to achieve extremely cool effects and realistic artworks. Let's bring back another layer. This one is cool. Now, on the top layer, opening this drop down menu, we can see there's a ton of blending modes. Each one does something different, and I really encourage you to go all in, create two layers, and on the top one, change the blending modes so you can see what each other does. Play with them, get to know them all, and don't worry, we'll be coming back to this amazing tool in full in a future tutorial. But in the meantime, go ahead and play with it. Alright guys, this is all I have for you today. I hope this tutorial was helpful in any way possible, and if it was, please consider giving me one like, don't forget to subscribe, and please click that little bell so you don't miss another tutorial. This is Hector, signing out.